My name is Alex Whitmore, and I'm co-founder and managing director of Taza Chocolate. Ever since we started sourcing cocoa in the Dominican Republic, we've always been wondering, you know, what, you know, what happens if we, if we cross the border on the island and, and start working in Haiti? How could we bring the Taza direct trade model to Haiti uh, to create an impact there? We're looking for people willing to take the risk, okay, to promote Haiti. I think this is my role as a Haitian to make that happen. So what we've done here is developed a really strong relationship with an organization called PISA. And their mission has been to add more value to the cocoa. Haiti missed the age of uh, industrialization. So because of that, we're ripe for the new type of business that is happening in the world today, sustainable totally organic. We are blessed to have a very rich soil. Our first commitment is that we pay a premium price in exchange for receiving excellent quality production. The second is that we want to make sure that the product is good in all, in all ways, not just in terms of the flavor characteristics of the cocoa, but also that it's good and sustainable in the communities that it's being produced in. Our uh, objective in getting into cocoa is to create a different dynamic in the chain. The relationship with the farmers is a direct one. We go to the farmers, we talk to them, we tell them when to pick. In the business of cocoa itself, we're making them realize that they have an excellent product in hand. They have not been making money with it because there have been many intermediaries, because Haiti has not been taking advantage of the high-grade cocoa where they have pricing availability, high prices high margins that can then be transferred to the growers, and that's what we want. It has a, a granular texture and a really powerful flavor. We're sharing our chocolate with these producers who've never had a chocolate like ours before. It's sweet. It's good. It's good. I get to spend time with them. I get to go to their family's house and have meals together, and I get to share the product of all of our labors. The adventure part of uh, sourcing excellent quality cocoa is something that is really fun for me personally. Sometimes it's exhausting uh, having those you know, 15 hour days out in the field, you know, meeting with producers, but ultimately getting to where you need to be and getting the cocoa to where it needs to be. It's a huge challenge and I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> in, in the news, you see people talking a lot about the Haitian resiliency. I think it's good, but what we really need here, we need investment. We need foreign direct investment. We need people to believe in Haiti. Because here, uh, we do have a lot of uh, challenges, but I, will, I want everybody to know that the opportunities are enormous here. One of the things that drives me as a person is, uh, is connecting people. I love, I love bringing someone that I, I, I met over here that's really good at this one thing over to over to this other place where this, uh, there's this other person doing something amazing in another way and, and then having uh, those people work together to make something beautiful. And I think that's what we've done here in Haiti. You know, we've, we've taken our model, of, of dir our direct trade model, uh, we've met some amazing people and I brought them together to do something that's really remarkable and a lot of fun. You know, when I look around me here, one of my dreams is to see Takao I'm seeing that the northern part of Haiti is smiling more just because they are proud and they are happy and making money uh, as farmers and everything, being able to send their kids to school. Really, that for me would be a huge achievement because we can do it. <laughs>